you know, Paul's, ener- Paul's energy is, is a hard one to resist. Um, and why yeah. would we? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. well, it's so positive and loving and uh, caring. So, um, so I'm here to experience more of that as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, Thanks. thank you, Adrian. Mm-hmm. Um, Sally, Brady yeah. Bunch. Yes. Well, we all see a different screen, Brady Bunch screen. It's not in the same order as yours. So okay. we feel <laughs> random. Um, <laughs> Hi, my name is Sally, and I live in Northwest Indiana, and I first met, um, my first retreat was in Hawaii, and it was a very magical retreat. It was with Paul and Susan, and in fact, I made so many connections back then that I still have today, and so that's been, did I say, two, since in 2002, and it was just life changing. It was so beautiful. It was so nice to be in the presence of so many like minded people that sometimes we felt like we were like high on drugs because we had such high spiritual <laughs> vibrations going on. And um, it was really, truly uh, life changing. Then I also went to two of their uh, retreats um, that they have in Illinois and they Geneva. And that was very, very uh, eye-opening too. I had to share that with more local people. But I've always been um, seeking out or reaching out and going on retreats. Um, Like Sedona is one of my favorite places. And sometimes you go there for the topics, but mostly I go there just to meet the people. It's the connectivity that you make and the feeling that you get when you're with like-minded people. It's just Mm -hmm amazing. There's just constant growth going on. And so Paul reached out and we've talked a couple times over the years, but not as much as recently. And so I was very, very intrigued um, to get involved and meet all these wonderful people. So oh, did I say I was from Northwest Indiana? And I also have a place in Florida. So yeah, I do, I do it. I'm a snowbird for the first time uh-huh. last cool. year. Cool. Where's your place in Florida? In Bel Air Bluffs, it would it was uh, that's between Indian Rocks Beach and Clearwater, so that area got it really bad with Helena. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. very yeah. bad. So yeah, uh, your island. Well, in but case we all need yeah. a place to, to stay in the in the winter, we can just drop it your yes, three. Just go right you guys go around. Take the round. Always open. Cool. So, yeah, Marlo, so- aloha. Yeah, aloha. Aloha group. I'm so happy to be here. Um, Yeah, my name is Marlo. I'm from Minnesota. Um, And I've just been following Paul, connecting in with this resonance um, for many years. Um, Followed uh, along with Susan um, and that whole journey. Um, What else can I say? I I mean, I agree with the group that uh, this this collective consciousness, this collective energy is the most powerful thing that we could Mm -hmm. uh, engage in. So I love these healing stories. Um, These healing journeys are just nothing short of miraculous and Mm -hmm. uh, inspires me and empowers me. I, I just I just love being part of these powerful groups and of course I have my own goals and dreams and whatnot, but just seeing what, what evolves from these connections. Yes. Yeah, cool. Cool. Dawn. Hi, I'm Dawn Davis, living in Texas right now. Um I met Paul and Susan on a retreat in Hawaii um, after I had gone through um, a hurricane, a devastating hurricane that had completely inundated our home and we were out of our home. And um, I had been dealing with adjusters and just a mess. And it came at the right, the right time where I just needed a break. I just needed to get away. And so uh, this, this retreat popped up and I thought this would be great. I can take a break from all this mess. And I did. And it was wonderful. Uh, Paul and Susan created a really safe, wonderful healing space. And I just really relaxed and enjoyed. So 
uh, when this came up tonight, I thought, well, I don't know what he's offering or what he's thinking of, but I definitely want to <laughs> hear about it. And, so, and especially since I hadn't really connected with Paul in ages, um, since then, I have gone on to facilitating groups myself, but it's nice to also just relax and be a part of a group. But yeah. I do uh, a meditation group uh, that I have had now for the past I don't know, 20, 30 years. Um, I had taken a break during the hurricane uh, for about four or five years, but I've been back at that and an Abraham Hicks discussion group and become a chaplain. I really, after the hurricane, I really jump started. I already had a lot of truth principles under my belt and metaphysics. I was always real metaphysical. I had some mystical experiences as a kid. Uh, but I really jumped into it, uh, especially losing all your stuff. It really does lighten you. It, mm -hmm. you know, like 30 years of stuff went and I was like light and just spirit self. So I did the oneness training. I finished, I was already Reiki and EFT healer. But I jumped into uh, master Reiki and uh, several other things, emotional release therapy and everything I could. You couldn't stop me. I was in everything there for the next few years. It was just total getting in touch with spirit and healing energy and being everything I could be, basically. So that's where I'm at. And um I'm actually supposed to be in at work today on a, a couple of businesses, but I'm so I may have to sneak out of here, but I was curious to see what what you were offering. Yeah. Cool. Sarah say. Hey everyone. So I first met Paul through Dreamminder, which I loved and still love. I think I need to get updates or something. I'm uh, several computers later from when that was. I can't even remember what year. But that's how I came to know Paul and then was introduced to Susan as well. And I remember my first retreat was in Hawaii, living from vision. And it was just exquisite. It was so magical. I still remember. I don't even swim, but there we were out in the water <laughs> and I was swimming after a shark because I'm short sighted. I didn't realize that uh, it was a shark until I saw that tail looks a little different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. Seriously>. my. <laughs> I didn't even swim but I was safe and all the dolphins formed in a tri trio around uh, in a, oh. a circle around me and I remember the prism of light on the the ocean oh it was so incredible Paul and Susan have given me some of the most beautiful memories of my life through the retreats I also went on to Sedona and I'll never forget they're like family soul family for me um, now I'm living in London. I'm from Dublin, but I'm living in London most of my adult life. I had a career singing opera and I also had a career uh, as a nurse specializing in cancer care and end of life care. Mm -hmm. And I was juggling both side by side. And in between, I became a master coach and I also published books. Um, I've never done a retreat, but I'd love to do a retreat now. Uh, so like I'm a spiritual mentor, but I focus on conscious communication because of my singing. I help people access their divine spark through their voice. Mm. And every time I think of voice, I think of Susan's voice. Mm -hmm. It was filled to the brim with love. Yes. Everybody mm. remembers that, right? Yes. Her voice and her meditations, which I still listen to. It's like the embodiment of love in yes. Susan's voice. Yeah. Um, and this is the vibration that we are. I'll always remember her for that. Uh, it was like an invitation to come home to yourself. So I'm really honored to meet you all. Uh, so glad to see Paul. I could speak for hours. Uh, these are seriously some of my happiest memories. Uh, and not just memories, they formed part of my journey as a conscious communicator and spiritual mentor for others, which I absolutely love. So, um, yeah, that's me. Wow. wow. Well. Now, I'm, now I'm supposed to follow that. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
deep breath. The 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 essence of aloha. Um, Marlo jumped on a call with us about when I say us, in other words, our group um, about mm, if you look back, Marlo, it wasn't quite two years ago. And, okay. uh, you know, I was going through my flotsam and jetsam years after the Humpty Dumpty effect, you know, when Susan, uh, in her words, jumped over the moon. Um, yeah. That's before she passed away. She goes, someday I'm going to jump over the moon. And I'm like, oh, my God, here we go with your metaphors. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to I've got some slides I want to show you guys but before we do that. It's like, you know, you, you're what makes this. And so um, I woke up. I'm, I'm going to start, I'm going to show you some visuals here. I'm, I'm just going to do it now. It'll, it'll make more sense as I show it to you. Let me do something in the background here first. Um, I can just, here we go. I got to click out of this window here for five seconds. Okay. Now I'm there. Boom. And now I'm going to go share screen. So you should see me right here, right? You're seeing me live, right? Mm -hmm. okay. so I'm going to go to this screen. You see this Aloha screen? Yes. Okay. So um, that's the essence of what brings us together. And mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you have to go to Hawaii to celebrate what that word means. Aloha, as Susan would say, this is the coolest thing. She gathered this on her own. This was not really in a book. We talked to a local healer in Hawaii, and that person taught Susan. You know what it really means, Susan? With every breath, I send love. Mm. Boom. Like, wow. And she shared that dozens, if not hundreds of times over the years. So <clears throat> this is one of my favorite pictures. You you guys remember her, you know? Oh, for sure. With, with that smile. Um, mm -hmm. And up until just about not even a month ago, guys, I wasn't ready. I I have had so many people, you can imagine, Paul, when are you going to start doing your retreats again? I was just not up to it. I wasn't ready. But there's another good picture of Susan. That's one of my favorites. It's at this little place called the Coffee Shack, which is right on Mamalahoa, uh, overlooking Captain Cook. Those of you that have been to to um, our, our retreat there, you you would know that, that area. <clears throat> So about, um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to mention this nice young lady, Katie Nagel. She was in our Lake Geneva group. Uh, I went looking for her the other day and learned, unfortunately, she just passed away in September. So part of what this is about is a remembrance of not just Susan, which she's in all of us, right, in our hearts, but people like Katie, who also graced our group. She, she came twice to our Lake Geneva group, and it just, you know, like when you find out suddenly someone is gone, that's what happened yesterday. I went looking for Katie to invite her to this and then stumbled on her obituary. She used to work for the Chicago Bears. They adored yeah. her. If you guys want to see an obituary, the Bears wrote one that's four pages long. And the, the meaning of this is when people come into our lives, like Susan used to say, at the end of every one of our retreats, you might remember this, that we were in a circle. We were holding hands. Claire, you, you didn't get to see this. Um, Carlo, you know, I don't think you did either, but um, she used to give everyone a gift individually that meant something to them. And everyone would be in tears. We're like, oh my God, this is amazing, you know? And then it would be time to come around the group. She gave one to me, you know? I'm like, oh my gosh. And then it was time for Susan. So the group would give her a gift. Then she would turn and then say this famous poem that she adored. Sometimes people come into our lives and leave footprints in our heart and we are never, ever the same. And she burst out crying every single time for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Every group, Hawaii, Sedona, Lake Geneva, <laughs> because that's when Susan allowed the love into her. And that was part of her, her challenge. She was a professional giver. Those of you that many of you can relate to that, right? Well, what if now, this is something that came to me just about two weeks ago. I woke up in the morning and this, this uh, document, which no longer exists on the internet, which is freaking crazy, um, mm -hmm. it spoke to me. It's called Mana, a Neglected Gift. 
I used to read it at every fire ceremony, Hawaii, Sedona, Lake Geneva. And what it means is all about is this thing that there was a time in our, in our, uh, in our civilization when we had such exquisite connection to the, the purity of life. We lived it every single day. And that's mana. But over time, now this sounds familiar, in these days especially, people began to squander that gift. They began to either try to control um, rather than giving, and they begin to lose their power. And so we've forgotten. I'm not saying you guys is different, but most of society has forgotten their essence, their connection to which is most important, and who we really are. And we've all had our own experiences of that because whenever you're in pain, whenever you feel disconnected, whenever you feel like, why has God or spirit creator forsaken you? Even if you don't say those words, there are days when we have our, our dark nights, our dark days, right? I felt those after Sue took off. <laughs> you can imagine, right? And what this article is about is the wearing away of our dreams of inspiration. Um, maybe I can put this on mute in the background. How can I do that? Um, just a little bit of, you know, occasionally, I think one or two of you might have alluded to this. You didn't say emptiness, but a feeling every once in a while, like, you know, what, what, what do I do? Like, for example, Wednesday for some people was one of those days. They felt just forlorn. Like, what am I going to do? And some of us that are on this call, we, we got on the phone together and we, we spoke and we talked and we shared, you know, now there are, when I say this, like something's missing, that something missing doesn't have to be material. Um, as Deb Marler, who came to a, several of our retreats, she said, I'm, I'm, there's something missing. I just don't know what the missing is. I never forget when she said that. It's like, you know, there's something more, right? And it's not your human self. It's your spiritual sacred self, but it's not outside of us. We all know this. You guys, you're savvy. You're a very savvy crowd. And it's something bigger than yourself with deeper purpose and meaning. The Hawaiians call that kuleana. So you know it doesn't have to be that way. You know it doesn't have to be status quo or this is what's showing up. My human self is, is just, you know, having this frequency. So... There's a word in Hawaiian called lokahi. It's one of my favorite words. I've used it ever since I first learned it. And what it means is, you, is harmony, where everything is, is part of like oneness and unity and a place of oneness. And the way I say it to people is, it's heaven and earth. Now, how many of your friends, if you shared that concept with them, would resonate with that? How many people actually feel like this is the place to be? Just, you know, think, think of that. And especially in, in times like this, that, you know, there's a lot of mm -hmm. the media is driving that friction, which makes perfect sense because that's how they make money. Um, I love this concept of Lokahi because it symbolizes what we are, who we are, deep down, super deep down. So the core disconnect is our breathing, but not in the normal sense. Let's say all of you have taken breathing courses. All of you have practiced the breath, right? You do it either as a practitioner, you do it for yourself when you meditate, but um, there's different levels of breath. And then there's the, there's the breath that breathes through us. And what Susan taught us was that there's something called the heart breath. And that's the kind that it's no longer just you. It's a, like I'm, I'm waiting for a description to come. Um, it took me a long time, you know, with tutelage from guess who, which you know, the cool thing about Sue is she never like would teach you. Okay. I'm going to tell you how to do something. You know that she wasn't that kind of a teacher. She would exemplify it. Whenever um, there was uh, stuff going on, and I would say to her, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? Susan's response was this. She'd say, well, <laughs> and I'd be like, well, what? That was her response. She breathed it. She released it and then held grace. And that 
I didn't know that was a master skill back then, but I'm like, wow, but what are you going to say about that? What about this political issue? What about that? What about, she'd say, well, and I'd say, yeah. And that was about it. She'd, that, there was no argument. There was no, you know, like when you want to put your stuff on other people, like, can we just get into it for a couple minutes? Why? Like, well, I mean, sometimes we need to. So another one of my favorite Hawaiian words is kuleana. And many of you that I've spoken to, I've shared this with many times. Your kuleana is your deep purpose, not your apparent purpose. In Hawaiian, your kuleana is why you are here. When you do, when you um, come from your kuleana, not only does it help others, but you are deeply connected within yourself. This is your raison d'etre, as the French would say. This is like, it's almost like your moral responsibility. This is what you're supposed to do in society. And so let's, let's kind of dovetail here. I'm going to ask you a question. First of all, everybody close your eyes for a minute. Just tune in and ask yourself, what would you love to manifest or bring into this world? And I mean, beyond just a simple manifestation, I mean something that is so big, maybe that you've forgotten about it. The kind that you say, well, that's not possible. So why well, I can't try that. You know, go deep into your heart. What's your big dream? It doesn't have to be one. It could be big dreams, plural. Just breathe into that just for a moment. Just allow yourself to feel what that is. What do you say to yourself about that? What comes up as you're feeling that feeling of it's already real right now? And just notice what your subconscious or these parts within us, what they might be saying about that thing. And we're not talking about a goal. We're not talking about, you know, like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to get X done. We're talking about something that's so big that it would transform your entire life and lives of others. That's what big dreams are about. So before you open your eyes, just kind of just kind of stay connected to the dream itself, but also what your subconscious said about that, whether it's possible, you know, tune into that. You might even want to journal this, you know, today, like while we're talking or after after the call. And as you begin to open your eyes now, you can see the slide I've got here is most people don't realize they're big dreams because of a couple of factors. Me too, by the way, right? We're all in this game together. You guys know that, hopefully, right? We're all in this boat together. <laughs> um, Self-doubt. Every person that I've worked with, I don't care if it's an executive all the way up to CEO, all the way down to somebody who's just starting their dream. Everyone's got self-doubt. The bigger the dream, sometimes it's the bigger the doubt that creeps in. Hmm, interesting. And then the not enough stuff, not enough capital, energy, know-how, et cetera, right? I've certainly struggled with that. After Susan got diagnosed, the wheels fell off my cart. I've told that to many of you, you know, and I've just had to keep refashioning, you know, reimagining, listening to guidance and then launch the big dream. And then some of them just absolutely crash on the vine. Interesting. So what's it teaching us when your dream doesn't take off or when it takes off you know, half cocked or have all of you experienced that? Yeah, it, it didn't quite work the way that I hoped for. Yay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you do? Hmm. All right. Well, here's how I have equated how I've gotten over the stuff in my years. Um, first of all, after Sue passed away, the first thing I did was I turned to the team of people that we created for her, her healer team, which was made up of therapists, healers, you know, all kinds of practitioners. I needed them because Paul's was Humpty Dumpty and, and we needed to put Paul back together again. I was good in days, not weeks or months. I mean, I, the grief was just releasing from me in ways that I had never felt before. That's huge. Those are the markers that tell you that you can't do this on your own. We know this, right? So what if, what if you had a team of people to help you create that dream? I don't mean a normal group of people. 
what's cool about you having spoke at the beginning was now you've gotten to know each other a little bit. Now imagine we're in the same room together for a couple of days and you not, not just to hear your stories, but your breakthroughs, where you came from, how you got to the breakthrough, what shifts that you made. And, it, you know, and it's not just about the how, though. And it's not just about any team. This is a group of really special people made up of people like you. An inspired team. This is what's helped me, you know, every step of the way. They're passionate. They're committed, like-hearted, like-minded. Which one of you said that? Was it Sally? Was it Adrian? One of you said that, you know, um, and evolved. You may not call yourself evolved or self-realized, but you wouldn't be on this call unless you were, because that's the kind of people that we are. Right, Marlo? Like, that's what we're being drawn to, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I interviewed a man a couple of weeks ago who told me about this book called Who, Not How. And I stopped. He says, here's where people get exhausted. They get exhausted on the how. How am I going to do this? How am I going to manifest this? What steps? What course? What's this? What's that? That's all how. And it drains us. It's the who that has what you want. And the coolest part is, I'll tell you more about that, is this famous Rumi poem that all of you have heard and you've probably shared with many of your friends. What you're seeking is seeking you right now. It doesn't matter how big that dream is. The fact that you, be, you could behold that dream in your heart means that you have the capacity within you to manifest it, but not just by yourself. We need people. We need a team of people. I don't mean employees. I'm talking about a mastermind group, right? A team of people that have such impeccable energy that when they gift you with the support that they, they have within them, it can almost bring tears to your eyes and often does. And that's what's been happening for me the more I practice this that we're talking about. So what's this about? Don, you're asking, what's this about? I call it the Lokahi experience. It's personal one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. If you don't need that, that's great, right? If you prefer group coaching and masterminding, that's the who piece. That's people like us coming together online and also peer-to-peer, -peer, which is probably more powerful than anything. So Marlo and Claire, I was thinking of you guys this morning. You're both in the process of writing your books, correct? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. You think you could support each other in writing those books? Talk about what yeah. you've learned. Oh, that'd be awesome. Talk about the breakthroughs, right? And then maybe Dawn says, yeah. oh, wait a minute. I wrote a book. You did? <laughs> got it published. Yeah. I know. Uh, I know. Um, oh, what's the guy's name at uh, Hay House? I can see his picture. Reed Hoffman. You know, Reed, you're serious. We're not talking three degrees of separation, folks. These days, it's two. So, what you're seeking, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's spontaneous uh, stuff. Thank you, Sue. That was Sue that did that probably. Right? <clears throat> um, what you're seeking is definitely seeking you. The question is, are you willing? Are you willing to, to release your, your old self, those limits that I have them, you have them. That's not the point. Okay, that's our human self, right? But how can others assist you in manifesting stuff that, frankly, on your own, you couldn't do because that's not the way it's supposed to be? We were never intended to do this, you know, self-made man or woman. That's just, that's bogus. It's not true. No one is self-made. It's always someone there supporting us along the way, right? So this number two piece of, of the Lukaya experience is really the most important part. But there's icing on the cake. And that's a Hawaii retreat. Now, as Marlo asked the other day, she goes, well, I just got back from a trip. And so what's your timing, Paul? And I go, well, here's the cool part. This isn't just one date. We're going to do either a December one, a February slash March event, or we might do, hey, Sally, we might do Sedona again. Okay. So don't be concerned about, okay, what date on the calendar the event is. It's going to be part of whatever the, the Lokahi experience is. During the year... In other words, starting 
whenever we start, you'll have this like, you know, you know, the phrase soup to nuts, like, you know, the whole enchilada. Why wait for an event to get the good stuff when you can get it starting like right now as we begin this program? Whether that be support from your mastermind partners, whether that be some of the personal sessions that we do together. <laughs> it's just, it's a question of, of your readiness and how, not how much you want something, because that, that's ego. It's what in you is calling you to do it. That's the Kuleana piece. So these are pictures of one of the retreats that we did in Hawaii. Uh, Sally, you organized this. You were yeah. at this one. Um, there's Susan over there and fire ceremonies and stuff. So it's three powerful programs in one. One-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching and masterminding, Hawaii retreat, which is a lot of stuff. I, we're not into sales stuff. We'll just pass that up. Um, and I'd like to offer you guys a pretty significant sure. discount. Um, it's not dependent on the retreat. Please remember that. If you can't get to a retreat on a certain date, please don't worry about that because it will hold your ticket for the next event. So you'll still get the really, really good stuff. So I asked a few of you this week, what do you think is a reasonable price? And when you talk about those three elements, you know, maybe it's somewhere close to 3,000. Retreats used to be two. 2000 to 2500 for Hawaii. Um, and I thought, I'm going to ask you guys, well, I, I don't want to, um, how do I say this? I don't want to point right at you, but is a $1,000 discount a reasonable discount? You don't have to say out loud whether that is or not because of the three things that we're combining. Um, so it's one-on-one -on -one coaching. Group coaching and masterminding, which I think is the piece. That's the who and not the how. You don't have to figure it out. That's the most frustrating part of creating what you want is thinking that you've got to figure out the how. Others have what you want. That makes sense to all of us on the inside. Anytime you've ever manifested something, it's because you hooked up the right person at the right time in the right moment that had the very thing you needed most to click something into place and it manifested. It could be a publisher in, in your case, Marlo and, and Claire, you might self publish. Dawn might kick in or Adrian might say something. Like, okay. Well, you know, I've got a friend that did such and such. Do you want to talk about how they did it? And all of a sudden your mind goes, are you freaking kidding me? Possibilities. And step by step. Now, having said all that, what if there's a, an unconscious issue within you, me, whoever, that still is blocking it? That's where the one-on-one -on -one coaching comes in because you, you can't do that in, in group stuff. It's very intimate. Those parts don't open up sometimes in group experiences. You know that. You've seen that many times. It sometimes takes that moment where the subconscious says, I'm not giving up this issue unless something truly impeccable happens. When the practitioner has unconditional love and they listen all the way down to where the trauma occurred that created that issue, that symptom, that block, then that symptom says, I'm ready. And it finally releases. All of you have had that experience at least once, maybe dozens of times, by having the right kind of person in your life. Anyway, so then the retreat, which when I say Hawaii retreat here, let's say that the timing for you is, is wrong for December or let's say February, then you can extend your ticket as part of this into a Sedona retreat that uh, might be better timing for you on your schedule. We'll still hold that space so you don't lose out on that part of the program. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, it's a really cool synergy. Now, I wish this was me and Sue in this picture. Okay, but here's the cool part. Sally, you and I talked about this the other day, and I have Sally to thank for this. The reason I held back from doing retreats for this long is because <laughs> um, you can't replicate Sue. And that my brain was thinking that. That's the reason why I hesitated and did not do retreats. When Sally and I talked just about barely, not even two weeks ago, 
she said, do you remember this conversation, Sally? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, she said, well, you know, I, 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 my life is so full. I got so much going on and I'm feeling really good, Paul, and I don't really need to retreat and stuff like that. And, and plus, I don't want to regurgitate other teachers' training stuff. I'm kind of done with that, you know? I said, tell me what you mean. She goes, I got to be me. I go, perfect. Because this is what's different now for me too. I'm tired of being the teacher, guys. I don't want to sit up there all day and go, aloha, lokahi, okay? Yeah, let, let's go to the volcano together. Okay, yeah, wow. After a while, it's it's like, wait a minute. It's all about you guys. That's what makes a program more full is the group. That's the who, right? So that's, if, if you see this diagram, this is this network that I'm building in the background that allows people to connect. When Paul is out doing whatever, you don't rely on Paul. You rely on each other. You cross-pollinate. Sally connects with Marlo and say, Marlo, where, what part of Minnesota are you from? Oh, I, you know what? My sister's from there. Oh, my God. And because the software shows your gifts, your talents, some of your posts, Sally might say to Marlo, Marlo, what's the name of your book? And Marlo tells her, that's the coolest freaking name I've ever heard. <laughs> you want to jump on the phone sometime and, and let's talk about how we can support each other. That's where the magic happens. And our network is what carries that forth. That's the Lokahi experience. And then, of course, the icing on the cake is the Hawaii experience. Or if your timing is not right for December or February, then we can make that Sedona. Because this is a year-round program, guys. So the $2,000 is not a one... How do I say this? It's not... Um, my brain just, just like went... Rawr. You don't need to pay like some membership fee every month, etc. For other people who come into the program later, they will. They'll pay a monthly fee. If there's anything I need, and I, one of my friends said, you shouldn't use the word need, Paul. You should say requirement. You know, let's talk about an evolved word. But honestly, we're human, right? If there's anything I need, guys, it's a group like you to be the founding members. That's it. The rest will take care of itself for all of us because you've got magic in you. You are the footprints that Sue talked about. They're in your heart. That's why I cried when Sally and I spoke last week when I said, I don't want to teach that way anymore. Every one of us that teaches in this group is going to be the Sue manifest piece. You know, like when Sarasai was so eloquently stating how, how Susan's voice was so transformative, that's in all of us. You know, Claire, even if you didn't get to meet Sally, I'm sorry, even if you didn't get to meet Sue, um, she's with us right now. A couple, three, four years ago, I would have been bawling my eyes out right now. Same, mm -hmm. same words. But I feel her presence every day. And the least we can do is to live aloha, to be mm -hmm. emissaries of light and, and share that with others. And if you're having a challenge in your life, we're going to be there for you in ways that are unexpected. I promise you that. I commit that to you from the deepest. Mm -hmm. From the deepest part of me. That's my kuleana. That's why I'm ready. Because it's not just going to be Paul. It's the backing of these individuals that we see on this call right now. And then it's also Sue and who she has access to, like Hiahi, our Hawaiian kuna friend. He said to me after my mom passed away, now he says it about Sue, the person you once knew as Sue, she's no longer Sue. She's in a completely different place. Mm. And we have access to angels like that. If you're having a hard day, or if you're having a little bit of a wonky attitude, <laughs> or you know you just can't get your groove on, or that thing that you want to manifest, that big dream, or even if the smaller dreams, right? We call upon these angels through each of us. That's how it becomes more real. When Adria says to, to Marlo, Marlo, okay, when you shared what your book was about, it lit me up. You know, like, that's what we're going to do on some of our group calls. It's not going to be Paul going, okay, aloha, lokahi, as much as I love that stuff. 
It's going to be you sharing what is most important to you, how you've learned to bring it out. And then someone's going to hear your essence. They're going to hear your kuleana and go, okay, you just changed my day because of your presence. And then they'll share that back to you. It'll make your day, Marlo, about your book. It, you'll get a new section on that chapter that you were talking about the other day. you will be like, oh my God, just, you, you just answered my question. That, mm. that kind of stuff. I can't guarantee that. That's not how spirit works, right? But if you set up the conditions, and this is huge. I learned this from a really good business coach the other, uh, recently, um, actually many years ago. This is part of the who piece. If you keep asking, how do I do this? Which is built into us in a very deep level. We're, we're the how um, generation. We're the how uh, culture, right? We're going to get it done. We're going to figure out the how. Um, he's, this guy said, what conditions need to be present in order to make your dream, goal, intent spontaneously exist? That's a meta question. What conditions need to exist that will automatically bring it about? Wow. And that, you know, that's a heavy question for some people. They'll be like, I can't even crack that crack process, you know? Well, what if you had the right kind of team that automatically were, were there for you? There's, that's a condition right there. Another example of a condition is, let's say you want to lose weight or you want to get in, you know, sh in shape. You don't just go to a, a gym because you might get lazy one day and not go to the gym. But you would pay a coach X amount per month that is going to show up when you show up. And if you don't show up, then you, you've just lost your money for that coach. That's a condition. That's only one kind. Other conditions are like when you, when you make a commitment to others, I'm going to do this and they show up. And what if you didn't? You just broke that. You won't do that when you make a promise to others, you know, and those are the sub what do you want to call them? The foundational premises of being in a mastermind group. Trust, connection, community, support. I'm here for you without condition. You, I could ask open-ended, how many of you have that right now in your life? You could, you could drop that in the chat. Or how many of you have, how many have experienced that in your life? Um, or how many of you long for that, you know? So here's how it works. First, there's the membership piece. We'd start on that immediately. Like you start connecting with each other, like in the first day of joining the Lokahi um, experience. And then we do the group coaching and masterminding. So now we've got this synergistic factor. Okay, now it's like you get your game on, no matter what it is. You, you, it might be that you don't even know what your big dream is. And yet the group brings it out of you and you're like, wow. How many of you, I'm going to ask you a question. <clears throat> um, how many of you have become aware occasionally that you stopped dreaming by a sound of yays or nays? Did you, have you squelched your dreams in the past? That's another way of saying it. Have you, yeah. have you gotten small instead of saying, I'm going to do this. This is worthy of me. Yay mm -hmm. or nay? Yeah. Sure. We've all done it, right? Mm -hmm. It could be with your healing. It could be with your project. It could be with your team. It could be whatever it is. We think small. To, we're not going to be self-judging here. We're going to gravitate to our comfort zone. That's the way the subconscious works, right? But every once in a while, status quo ain't cutting it. You know, humility, which you all have, um, is not going to get your work out there to the world or get you to the next manifestation of what you want most. It's setting some kind of big dream. If that's inspired, well, that to me, that's almost a done deal when you've got the right people to help you manifest it. So personal one-on-one -on -one sessions to help you make those, those shifts individually. And then of course, the icing on the cake. So that's kind of it. Um, you know, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, the, the spirit <clears throat> of who Sue is, notice I didn't say was, um, it is what's guiding us. And any of your angels, mm -hmm. your 
individual angels um, and what matters to you most. So any questions? Anything that you'd love to share? <clears throat> I love the I love your presentation. And I love the whole idea of working together as a group of like-minded souls to bring the love down into the world for other people. So however that however we can do that is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. We're all in this together, guys. Yeah. Makes it easier. Mm -hmm. The um the morning I got the call from the doctor and he's a good friend of mine now, which to say that a doctor is a good friend of mine is a real stretch, by the way. <laughs> um, I have to say he's my doctor. He's my best friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Name is John Canals. You guys would love him. This guy's got the biggest heart of any, any doctor I've ever met. <clears throat> yeah. And his normal voice is like this. That morning, his voice was like this. He goes, Paula, it's John. You know what that voice is at 630 in the morning on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. After we did a healing ceremony for Sue the night oh. before, my God, you guys would have had, you would have burst out crying. It was so unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, she didn't make it, Paul. From that day forward, I didn't realize how broken I was. And I could not be here today had I not had a group of people. And I mean, <clears throat> amazing people who helped me not just piece myself back together again, <laughs> but release the stuff that broke, the mold broke mm. open, right? You know, that that wonderful quote by Rumi that says, um, the cracks are what allows the light to come in. Wow. So whatever your, whatever phase you are in your life, or as you're listening to this as a recording, because there's a lot of people that wanted to make it today that couldn't. <clears throat> having someone and I mean a team of people not just one um, that supports you that ask you the right questions think of the importance of that right there how often do people care enough about you to listen to what you're saying they, listening doesn't happen here it happens here in the heart when you feel listened to at that level how does that feel that's healing and transformative right there. Any healers that you've been to, any good practitioners, any friends, when they truly listen to you, you feel honored. Everything changes when there's that kind of person in your life, right? I had, I was spoiled guys for 30 years with that in my life. It ain't like that out there. <laughs> my, my joke is like, you know, one of my books that I might write, and I might not, it's called Dateless in Arlington. I live in Arlington Heights, by the way. <laughs> I tell it to my friends. They're like, how can you be so funny about this? <clears throat> I go, because otherwise I might cry, you know. <laughs> um, I don't take dating seriously. The abandonment issues that I had after Sue left, it took mm -hmm. some deep, deep therapy, guys. I had three mm -hmm. incredible healers. Could not have done it on my own. Wow. Now, to those who are given much, you know the rest. Much is expected. Yeah. That doesn't mean if your <laughs> cup is, is needing more energy that you have to give now. You, you receive when appropriate, and then you give when appropriate. You know when that those times are right. You know, I'm totally ready. <clears throat> you can hear it in my voice. You can see it in, in my smile. You know, but I'm not doing this on my own, and that's why. You know, I'm looking forward to supporting every one of your dreams and passions and Kuleana's. I've spoken to every one of you individually, uh, although Adria, I haven't spoken to you lately, but we spoke last summer, you know, about what is most important for you. How can we support that? How can we help that be brought into manifestation or relieve us of that stuff that's, that keeps us, I don't know how to say it. <clears throat> All of you have your own words for that. What stops? Balance. What's that? I said balanced. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So 
I would love to hear anything else you guys have to say, even if it's unrelated, you know, in terms of how you're feeling right now. Um, it, you know, let's put the Makai experience off to the side at the moment. This is not selling. This is more so listening and, and learning together. Hmm. What do you want to birth? What do you want to what do you want to bring to this world? What are you just absolutely just jazzed about? I can say something. Um, so I don't know if you read my book. I think I sent a copy of my book to you. I don't know if you ever got around to reading it. But uh, because I had so much experience in end of life transitions and cancer care, I've always been open to integrative medicine, but also to living consciously. And I have so much experience of seeing people end their lives, not like Susan. Mm -hmm. A multitude of people have no clue who they are, never felt seen and known truly on a soul level. And basically we're uh, blindfolded going through life and then ended up with having a sudden diagnosis maybe where time ran out and energy ran out and they couldn't, if the opportunity to live consciously was snatched away from them. And so I wrote a book detailing some of the experiences I'd had uh, with people so that we could learn from the ones who went before. But it's really interesting to me, Paul, that, um, sorry for the, the phone, um, I'm actually preparing a program at the moment, which is on the same topic. Uh, and it's basically inviting people to live consciously rather than wait. Uh, so the book I wrote was Rebranding Death and Inviting People to Live from Deep Human Values and remember our true values yeah. and live consciously and communicate consciously in that way. But most people pretend death doesn't exist and they <laughs> pretend that it won't happen for them. Yeah. And then time runs out, something happens, which we saw in COVID. A lot of people's choices were taken away and there was no time to say goodbye. There was no time to get complete, no time to finish your bucket list, no time to avoid regret. And so that actually creates a particular death, which people don't realize. And also you fail in the game of life because you haven't really been on track playing the real game of life. You're distracted by everything that doesn't matter in life for the most part. Well said. So I'm bringing people to a, a life review, not to wait until death happens. So I suppose in a way it's kind of similar, but it's very targeted for um, uh, really looking death in the face and refusing to run away and in that reclaiming life and living life differently. Yeah. So because when, you, when, when people are ostriches around our mortality, it gives a certain life. Mm -hmm. it's, you're pretending and you're avoiding and you're in resistance and you're in fear. And it's well covered up with coping and the, the public face you show people. But you're not living a conscious life to fulfill your divine potential. You're not you're probably in danger of not graduating from the school of life and staying in the birth death continuum. So honestly, Paul, I really resonate with what your intention is, uh, because this is the work I'm doing myself now. So, yeah. uh, I'm yeah, imagining, it was lovely to hear that. Yeah. yeah I'm imagining, uh, which is not a stretch by any any stretch at all. We're in the same room together right now. Okay. Um, we just we just went out to the beach. We did Qigong in the morning or we did yoga. We might have done this magical thing called the planes of movement by this woman from Minnesota who's on the call with us right now. Oh my gosh. She's in the Brady Bunch picture. She's the one in the center. If you can see where I am, you know. Hi, Marlo. She might teach us this, you know, uh, on the shore in the mornings before we go back into the classroom. Because who wants to go into the classroom, first of all, right? You want to have fun. You want to be outdoors. That's where you get the, the best learning. Um, I'm, I'm, we're imagining sitting with each other. And Adria is sharing her story, her kuleana, her dream. And we're sitting listening. And Sally goes, I'm fascinated. How can we support this? You know, and Sarasai shares what she shares. And then Marlo says, you know what? Um, I could cry. 
because I just got another chapter from what you guys are talking about. Right. And then Claire says, okay, uh, how could you have known? You know, I'm just imagining now guys, because we've done this, you know, for 15 years or so that you have what I need and we've got what you need. And that's how this works. When you're in an impeccable group of people, is there going to be one or two people that you might not totally like be like, you're my kindred spirit? Sure. Every group's going to have a little bit of differential, but you know what? That person's got something to teach you. You know how groups work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking of a couple of people yeah. I can remember that were that. <laughs> exactly. Right. Is it okay if I jump in for a second? Yeah. I am just blown away with what you've just talked about because I so strongly believe in that, that we wait so long. I almost feel like death should be talked from the time mm -hmm. a child is a child because what is it saying? Um, begin with the life. Uh, wait, begin with the end in mind. You know, if everybody would really sit and value their life in the current moment instead of getting caught up in all these little things and realizing how uh, valuable the time is that they have and appreciate things. I definitely want to get your book and read it because I, I feel very, very strongly about that, that um, death is, death is a, a different thing that people, we get surprised. I can remember when I was, uh, maybe a teenager and the first person I ever knew passed away. I was just like shocked and it takes time to realize. And then when you go through a lot of deaths, like I had a sudden death of a fiance and I remember, I, th I think I was at a, a halfway decent spot at that time. Cause I remember the first thing I said to myself is, okay, stop, look at the light of the tunnel. Look at the light at the end of the tunnel. It's teeny tiny. And I can't see, cause I didn't know when I was ever going to stop crying, you know, months it felt like, because it was a, he fell down a flight of stairs and instantly died. And it was just devastating. And so going through that just knocked me off. And then I've had, I'm from with eight kids in the family, four of my siblings have passed away, three of them from cancer. So you start experiencing things and it doesn't make it, uh, it doesn't take the feelings away, but it brings in the reality component that this is a part of our life, you know, and it, it has me thinking so differently now that my death is something, my, my last brother that passed away, when he was in the hospital room and he, he wasn't expected to be there, he, he was still doing well, it seemed like. And he looked around and goes, oh, so I'm going to die here. That was like such empowering words in a weird way because we're all going to die. And I've told my granddaughter, who's only 14, I said, you know, we have to cherish life. Everybody you know is either going to die before you or after you. And that sounds like so stunning to people that you would talk to somebody at a young age about that. But to me, it's allowed me, the death of my loved ones have allowed me to live a better life. And acceptance, acceptance is the key, that it is part of life. So I am looking forward to reading your book. And God bless you for doing the work you do. Oh, thanks. But, you know, yeah. just like Paul said, um, talking about Susan, um, we are not the body. We are not the mind. So actually, you don't die. Right. The body dies, but you don't. Okay. So it's a big illusion. It's a big uh, psyop in a way that you can die because you weren't even born. You are divine consciousness, always, yeah. always present. Right, Paul? Really and so well Susan yeah. embodies that. That's yeah. how she lived. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, and this is who we all are at the essence. We are yeah. embodiments of love, divine love. And, 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 and f I mean, for me, I renamed death as the angel of awakening and remembering yeah. the angel of life. So yeah. it's like our thinking. We don't even examine how we think people think they think and believe things about death that they never even examined. They never even looked at it. It's just like uh, conditioning. Right, Paul? Yeah. And I was thinking of something uh, that, that Sue um, was right when you were talking, Sarasai. I'm also hearing Marlo on the side channel, on the side band, because she's a hospice worker. Mm -hmm. you know, this gal, you know, we, oh, wow, how do I say this? Because Sue, Sue's coming in now too. You know, Sue was not one of those teachers that would say, okay, here's what we're going to teach. What? No, she was like, okay, 
would you like to learn the ways of the heart? <laughs> We'd be like, yeah. And we need those kind of teachers, right? Right, Marlo? Yeah. Uh, Um, yeah, I would say if I can just speak a little bit. Yeah, I, I work as a hospice nurse is my full time job. Um, and I was just sort of thrust into it in my life. I never wanted to be a nurse. I never wanted to be a hospice. <laughs> but here I am. Sort of happened. Um, my, I say my original life, I was a like a A breath worker. I I worked with movement. I I did a lot with yoga, Pilates, all those modalities. I think it's extremely healing, cleansing, and it just it gets things moving in your life. Um. So one time, uh, I was, you know, having a lot of pains and struggles with a lot of my patients. dying. Of course, it's kind of how it goes. And I happened to be working at a place that was filled with Catholic nuns. <laughs> so it's this sisterhood of these nuns. And the way that they look at death, you know, and how they approach it is, is very different to, you know, maybe what society might teach people. Um, I think the sudden deaths, you know, the catastrophic ones are the, are the hardest to, to grapple with, but, um, One one of the nuns put her arm around me. She just saw I was struggling, and she said, "Think of it as being a midwife for souls. So you're giving birth to these souls going to heaven or going to that spiritual oneness realm." And that that really just stuck with me. Um, so yeah, that's true. We're a midwife for souls, but how about for the living? I always say too, this world, this world. is for the living. So how can we continually give birth to our own soul and other people's souls right now while we're here, while we're talking to each other? So I'm, I'm not sure what that looks like, what that means, but that's, yeah. I guess that would be my kuleana, Paul, is 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 bringing that out in people because we put up with so much you Yeah. you put up with whatever pains struggles you have in your own life and to just work through them and to bring out their kuleana Yeah. Exactly. Your the coolness in you. It's just pretty much the same thing. Your coolness, you know. <laughs> um, nice <laughs> the question that's coming to me. It's not really a question. It's more of a knowing, and that is having people like this right now around us, is there anything you can't create in this life with this kind of impeccable team? And And I'd like to say something if I can, Paul, yeah. sorry. I'm amazed at how many connections there already are <laughs> among yes. us. Right. I'm an RN. I re am retired, but I've done hospice work and I've worked on both ends of life. I've delivered a lot of babies mm -hmm. and I've helped people at the end of their life and their families. Mm -hmm. um, and both I've always felt are such a privilege to be present in those moments that both are miraculous. And I got to be there. I got to be there and help them through that piece. And it's extraordinary that here we are, there aren't many of us and already there are all these connections and Paul, you did this. I'm like, I, I have to say, you know, my life has been a little challenging lately to um, be present in the outer world and, um, And, and I keep saying, you know, there's a time for everything under heaven, right? And this is my time to take care of myself and nurture myself. And, um, and, uh, but I, and I haven't been this engaged in a very long time. So I want to thank every one of you um, because you really touched me and I feel engaged in like, I'm coming through this and I will, um, I will be there. I am, I am here now. And, and just to share 
I mean, Susan was so powerful. I have never forgotten her for a moment in my life. I was very privileged to be part of a Hawaii retreat, which was amazing. Um, there was an earthquake when I was there, you might remember, but the East Coast girl thought it was, thought it was, a. Uh, um, that volcano was erupting because we were sitting on the lava rocks and I thought, Oh no, <laughs> the volcano's erupting. <laughs> oh my God. No. Yeah. Do you, you remember? It I remember was remember lying point. down on those lava rocks and looking up at the stars. Do you remember that Paul? Oh God. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah, mean, magical. Wonderful. Magical. Yeah. Magical. And the plume that, you know, comes up that rises up out of the ocean from the hot lava. It was quite extraordinary. And so many things that I learned from Sue was, you know, just um, you talked about it, that presence and allowing and that it's not about me. It's about everyone else. Yeah. It's about all the people in the circle, each one of them, and not so important about me. It's about them. And when you share that presence, then people open up and they discover what's inside of them. Um well and in, in my difficult times, I always remember this was the end of a meditation that Sue taught. And I've taught meditation so many times. And so often I have ended my meditation this way. I am held in the loving arms of the universe, forever safe, forever loved. And so I am. Uh -huh. and, about that. and so you are. So we all are. So we all are. So we all are. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If you had said those words, Adria, to me as little as four, maybe five years ago, I'd be bursting out crying right now. Yeah. Uh, my heart was on my sleeve for months. Imagine being a woman coming into Paul's life and he's got this big, I got, I'm this heart dude, right? I'm fully hatched. There, there was, there, there, how does a heart get bigger than this? And people are like, okay, dude, dude, you got to, whoa, you got to slow down. And, um, when people like Sue come into our lives, not only are you not the same person, right? Yeah. But the 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 gift is this thing that keeps replicating itself. It's like now your your game has been upped. Hard power tremendously is more powerful than mind power. Oh my God, the world, you talk about the biggest secret, the most undiscovered country within the human self is the heart, not the physical heart, obviously. It's your it's your spiritual sacred heart. Sue Castle, some of you might know this story. Uh, there was a time when we weren't dating, okay? And I went to a bookstore, downtown Chicago. Some of you have heard this story. Um, and I found a book called The Radiant Heart. Yeah. All of you know it pretty well, except for maybe Claire. Um, and I bought the book. Sue wasn't there with me. I figured, God, Sue's going to love this. You know, this is way before her heart days. But she used to talk about heart a lot, which would make sense, of course. I called her up that night. I said, I have a gift for you. She goes, what's that? I go, uh, whatever. She goes, I'm open tomorrow morning. She comes over. I, I did the, you know, close your eyes, count to th one, two, three. And she opens her hands and she sees the book and she goes, oh. And she opens the book. She gets to a chapter and she goes, how could you have known? You know what? She goes, this chapter has my name on it. <laughs> I'll never forget. This is like, yes, <laughs> And she says, I go, what's the name of the chapter? And she goes, giving and receiving. Paul, for all my life, I've been a professional giver. And I'm like, oh, you mean? She goes, yeah. Oh, my gosh. For 18 months from that day forward, she apprenticed with that teacher who wrote that book, traveling almost two hours every uh, each direction to go to Grand Haven, uh, mm -hmm. Michigan, from Chicago. And her heart power was doing this, guys, that all of you have felt, even Claire, who didn't get to meet her, right? Um, and <clears throat> I'm experiencing it. I'm getting spoiled by this, this heart, you know, field at day after day. And, you know, I created this thing called Serenity, which measures the heart energy, which um, has not hit its full gate, and that's okay. Yeah, I wonder how it might work. Gee, maybe others have what I want. Gee, think of it. What a concept. Um, a good friend of ours that runs a wellness uh, group up in Wisconsin that we visited quite often, for obvious reason, when a person goes through, you know, fourth stage, end stage cancer, 
She and Sue got to be such good friends. I think you guys will love this story. Um, that other woman's name is Susan. So they were my two Susans. And they asked me to come in the room every time that Sue had her therapies with this lady. Um, when Sue Castle passed, it broke this other woman, Susan Rohr is her last name. It broke her heart um, because it was like her sister, you know. And she only got to know her over like six months, six, eight months, maybe. Not quite, you know. Well, you don't need a long time to get to know someone at the soul level, right? So about a year later, well, I'm sorry, actually several years later, when I created Serenity, I asked Susan Rohr, can we jump on a Zoom call? You know, I want to demo it for you and how it works. So she's got her, her phone and she's reading her, her heart energy. And um, this big smile is coming across her face. And she, she, she looks at me and she goes, there's my HRS, Paul. And it was a really high number. I'm like, well, that makes sense. She then says these salient words. And I burst out crying. Sue would be so proud of you. Mm. <laughs> it's like, when we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, um, that's Kuliana, folks. And it doesn't mean if you're not doing it that things aren't right. No, 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 no. It It's a process. Not everybody knows this deep thing, right? That's okay. You have variations of that deepness, of that Kuliana-ness. You practice it, but how do you know? You look in the eyes and the hearts of other people, and they'll tell you, you are in your zone. How, how did you know to say that? What you just said just changed me. That's Kuliana land when you do that. Because it's a gift meant to be given. That's it. You, you keep it for yourself. And it, that's the squandering that that mana neglected gift article is all about. That's what's happening. I won't name names. You go to any place you want for people who squander that gift. We all know who people like that are, right? The opposite of giving is taking, right? There's takers and there's givers. If you balance that, now you got like Lokahi. You can receive, like Susan said, and you know, her deepest wound was, it was hard for her to receive. It's okay. Now she's in a place where there is no polarity. Actually, according to that doctor that I told you about, his brother, who's an empath, said in the same conversation that Sunday morning, Paul, I was talking to my brother last night. Sue keeps coming up in these conversations. I'm like, what are you saying? And he says, um, she, she, she's already back. I'm sorry, that was two mornings later. I, my brain is freaking out. I'm like, you just called me to say she's gone. And now you say she's back? Yeah. I go, can you share me some of the details? He goes, you know what? They're calling me into surgery. I got to go. Goodbye. I'm like, what? <laughs> you can't be serious. You can't leave me like this. And I called him several times. I'm like, John, can you continue that story? I don't know. I don't know. That's my bro. The only person stranger than him is you, Paul. I don't know. You know? He's just a card. So he, I, knowing that, I didn't go looking for Sue. Thinking she, she, you know, re-manifested. I'm doing what we're doing now. Yeah, definitely. Listening. Definitely. Keeping our eyes peeled for, for, for people who, who carry this, this love in their hearts. Mm -hmm. You deserve that. Every one of you. And giving that then balances that out, Right. So, so as we conclude here, thank you, every one of you, by the way, for, for coming today. Thank you for sharing your stories, because that's what makes this magical. You know, you said, Adria, thank you, Paul, for doing this. Well, I'm just a facilitator. You know, I just said, I was, I'm doing what I was told to do, what I was guided to do, right? And I hope to do more of this whatever that means, as we expand what the Lokahi experience is. And, oh, did I forget? Another icing on the cake is going to be um, Serenity, is the app itself. As I said to Marlo a couple days ago, um, I need your help in crafting it to be something better than it already is. More useful, more resourceful, um, more adaptive, 
Because in today's world, this is an attention economy world, and it's attention deficit more than we've ever seen. And there's another group of people who are the most affected, and that is anyone under millennial age. They're more distracted than any generations in history. And when you look across the street and you see a kid who's doing this, I just saw a little girl. She couldn't have been 10 years old and she wouldn't even look up. And I'm thinking her parents, why did they give her one if she's that young? Well, whatever, that's a judgment, right? So uh, that would be my one of my asks that you help me craft that, you know, if you guys join this and if you don't, well, that's cool. You know, we'll talk offline, you know? <laughs> so again, thank you. Mahalo. Thank you, Paul. You. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Hope to, uh, <laughs> hope to get together again and see you again. I'm going to do another one of these next week. In other words, like an, you know, an intro and, and it'll be different next time, you know, um, uh, Big, big time mahalo. Uh, you guys are so very special. To say that people like Susan or your grandparents or your sisters or brothers or loved ones that have passed are smiling upon you, upon us right now, is a vast understatement. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, can I just say thank you? Thank you for inviting us to join you in this space and thank you for your authenticity, your huge heart and your love. Um, when I think of Susan, I also think of everything was an expression of love. I think of the workbooks, which I still have and still look at and how everything was beautiful in it. The flower at the front, uh, the pictures and poems on the inside, everything was an expression of love. And this is the cont continuation of that love through you. Yeah. And Everything was like so this. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So meaningful. Thank you. thank you for saying that, Sarasai. Um, uh, you know, this is one of my favorite pictures of Sue. It's it's in the garden near um, mm. um, Hono now. And um, it's just so Sue, you know, when you look into her face. <laughs> You know, she's just, she's just so in her kuleana, you know, mm. that, that there's, we didn't talk about the word for heart. It's called pu'uvai, P-U-U-W-A-I. The Y-E is, is the, 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 the flowing, you know, like hovai, and the pu'u is the opening. So it's the opening of the flowingness of what this thing is. That's what the heart is meant to do. It's meant to open. And in this world, we've never seen more closed hearts. That's not a judgment. That's an opportunity. It's a calling. When we see closed hearts, we embrace. We don't judge. Nope. I don't care what political side you're on. I don't care what you're spewing at me. Actually, you're not spewing. Oh, gee, I wonder why they're not spewing. Because maybe on my, re my receptor sites don't need spewing. Wow. Mm -hmm. There is a concept. Very few of you get spewed at, I bet. Would you agree? Do you think that might be true? <laughs> I are, I never anyway. get What's that? We're all, we are all one, right? So anything that you, you get out there on the external is you yourself. So <laughs> yeah. there's yeah. the work. There's the homework. Yeah. I. You know, the magic that Sue did on me, you can imagine, guys. I used to be, you know, like a... Come on, come on. I don't mean a pugilist. What I mean is, you know, like, don't you, don't dare me. And there was a time when we were in Hawaii. She wasn't doing so well. You know, we, we, we flew there because her doctor said, that's okay. Go on that flight that you already booked. When you get back, you can do your surgery and your chemo. And I, I'm like, well, we'll leave that one open, you know, because I'm not into Western medicine at all. So we went there and she's feeling great in the first couple of days, you know, we even went to the other side of the island for a volcano, da, da, da. And one morning she wakes up and she's just really in an awful way. And it's getting worse. She can feel the acidity in her gut. And she had a, a, a honeydew-sized melon tumor, you know, like bigger than big. So we had to start rearranging our trip. We had to cancel the rest of our stay. We we're getting hassles from the landlord. You know, he had no compassion. Like, there's the test of somebody. When your wife has cancer... And they won't even say, well, maybe I can think of how to figure out a credit or whatever. Anyways, we're figuring all this stuff out. 
It's going into the evening of, a, of a, the night before we're thinking we might leave for the airport. She's in abject pain. And there's a guy outside. This is the night of the second Obama uh, election. This is the night. And so he's in, and our neighbor was just, just absolutely ready to grab a gun and shoot people. And he's making verbal accusations and, yeah, I've got to get this. And he's, he's like screaming out loud. Well, he's right outside our lanai. And Sue's like, Paul, what's going on out with that guy? I go, I'll be right back. She goes, don't yell at him. I go, do you hear what that first part? She's thinking I'm going to yell at him? No way. I walked down the driveway. He hears me because it's a rock driveway. Most driveways in Hawaii are rock driveways. And uh, he looks up and he goes, hey, hey, how's it going? I go, oh, we're from next door. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I go, well, I, I said, uh, if you got a minute, I said, you know, I explained the situation. He goes, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Because, you know, my wife has cancer and she's not doing well. He's, he just apologized. Is there anything I can do? And he opens his heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching this going, oh, my God. There were times that I would have said to this guy, will you shut up? Those days are over. I don't need to do that anymore. I wonder why, guys. You have one guess. <laughs> and um, he's he's calming down. He explains why. He says, you know, I was going to go out and get a gun today at Walmart. Oh, wow. You know, he says, but is there anything I can do for you? Is What help do you need, sir? And I said, we're good. He goes, you calling me for anything. And I'm about to leave. And I said, you know what? I'm in agreement with you. You're what? Paul is saying these words? I said, yeah, there's some things about Obama I don't agree with either. He goes, dude, you're like my bro. I'm laughing on the inside. And uh, I'm about to leave the driveway. And he says, listen, come on over for a beer sometime. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, you got to be serious. I can't believe this is happening. I would never get together with someone like this. But that's the beauty of, of heart energy. I come upstairs. Sue goes, I heard some of that. What went on? I go, you know what? You rub off on people really well. It works. This stuff changes the world. Yeah. So that's just one of the many occurrences that has happened. So it doesn't matter who, what color hats people wear and, you know, all their belief systems. It's like, you know, we're good. We are on the same planet together. We're going to get through this. That's my vibe. That's, that's my credo. Right, Marlo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We're absolutely getting through, getting through this. It's only going to get better from here. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. In fact, any opposition, this is what Kiahi taught us, um, our, our Hawaiian kahuna friend. When opposition shows up, it's a really good sign. That is telling you that you are ascending, right? You've read many books that they, that's a spiritual principle. The higher you ascend, the more opposition, not always, but sometimes shows up. It is a test of self to see, are you willing, as Randy Posh would say in the, uh, the last lecture, are you willing, when you see that wall that is otherwise insurmountable, are you willing to go around it? See, most people don't realize the walls are put up to prevent those who are unwilling to go around the walls. Mm. That's why people don't realize their passions and their dreams, because they're unwilling to do the extra work, the extra spiritual work in this case, right? Not just diligence. That'll, you'll, you know, you'll burn out if it's hit that wall, motivational style. But when you've got a team of people like we're talking about, the, um, I was listening to The Wall yesterday by Pink Floyd, you know, tear down the wall, you know, and um, that's just metaphorically fun. Um, I think of we 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 think of. How, I'm going to ask this question to each of you, to your heart. When I asked you what your big dream was. What's your level of comfort of that big dream? You don't have to answer that out loud unless you want to, you know. Or, or is that big dream kind of limited from what the really big one could be? I realized about a year or two after Sue passed away, there was an author who had a book out um, and I bought it because I heard her on a webinar and she said, um, have you stopped dreaming? And I'm like, oh God, you know what's ironic? 
Paul has a company called Dreams Alive, and I stopped dreaming. Makes sense. I was traumatized, guys. You know, I had PTSD numbers of times. I mean, you know, worse, definitely multiple times. And then that question opened me up. And I had, you know, two or three mastermind groups, two or three healers and all that sort of stuff. And uh, stuff started opening up again. But this is different now for me. I don't know if I have the words. Sometime we'll talk offline, you know, aside from just today, about what my big dream is. And this is a piece of it, right? Serenity is a huge piece of it. The heart is the biggest piece of it, by far, because it transforms everyone, including us, in the process. That's what society needs most. It's not just loving kindness, because that may be Mamby Pamby. It might be that you're kind to the person who's used to not being ever kinded. Because their receptor sites are fried with abuse from a very young age. And they can't take in love from average people. But they can take in bro love, right? Or they can take in tough love. But if it's too soft, maybe it needs to be like, you know, when you get a nice massage. And they go, okay, I can handle that. Not too much. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I'll send you links for the, the Lokai experience, you know, how to sign up and reserve and stuff like that. Um, have a great weekend and uh, look forward to connecting again. Thanks, indeed. Thank you. Much, Thank much. You. Love. Namaste. 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 Aloha. <laughs>